Hi, welcome to Food TV. My name is Egypt Dunn. Cultural Extravaganza is an annual trip St. Louis University's Black Student Alliance takes every year. This year, it's a pleasure of traveling to New Orleans. New Orleans is home to one of the oldest African-American neighborhoods, Treme. It is also the birthplace of jazz. It is also where Xavier University is located. Xavier University is the only black and Catholic university. That leads to our first stop at Xavier University. And on the stage, where you are, when I refer to it, I'm talking about exactly do you know the history of where you sit. It's one thing that you don't pay attention to. Y'all are all in college, you know the history of your university, but where do you truly sit? You see, in 1925, Xavier University was founded to make sure that African Americans and Native Americans had a chance to be educated. This grew into making sure that every single student who wanted the opportunity to be educated had that opportunity. You're talking about the very school. That is the only historically black and Catholic university in the Western Hemisphere. You don't have to be Catholic to attend. Over 76% of our student body is not even Catholic. You're talking about the very university, founded by a saint, the only university founded by a saint, St. Catherine Drexel. Now this is strong, this is nice. Shows a little bit of our background. When it comes down to it, this small HBCU in the South, is small by design, big in everything. I need you to realize, this is the home of my MBA, uh, I guess, historians. For the first African American to sign a contract with the NBA, Nate Clifton. Here. The first African American to play in the playoffs with the NBA, Donald Watts. Here. Or what about recent information? How about the past, the immediate past, Surgeon General, who was an African American female? Dr. Regina Benjamin earned her chemistry degree from here. Came back after she left her position come right back here and be our endowed professor of our public health sciences department. So what you're looking at is the place where the longest tenured president of any college or university served, Dr. Noma C. Francis, an African-American male who graduated from Xavier and served as our president for 47 years. Where you sit is history, but there's so much more to us than what you can just read in the books. So y'all ready to find out a little bit more? Yeah. See, you gotta love it. At Xavier, we made new connections and learned about its rich history. The night of day one, we as a group got together for Harambe Circle. During Harambe Circle, we reflected on the importance of CE, while also getting to know more about each other. Like, DSA, like, it's a real cool group, even though I can't go to every meeting, like, 
I like to be a part of it and see all the black folks together because even though it's predominantly white, we still got to be I'm sorry. Hey, man. <laughs> I learned that it's more of us than I thought. I thought it was like 10 of us. This ain't even all the black people. No, bro, because I feel like I'd be at school like drowning. Like, it's the other people. So, like, it's not like I'm the only one. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I feel like I'm like the only one that's like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? don't know who they are, so like, like I see that. Oh, go ahead, say that. Can, yeah. we, can we acknowledge each other when we see each other? Because we've all been on the like, trips together. Oh, you know, just say, hey, you ain't got to okay. stop and talk to like, But just really say hi. Like, and I know that there are like more black people coming to the flu and see you all here to keep going what we have. Like, for me, like, I'm a minor, so like, I'm in like, the hall with The next day, we visited Alton Sterling's memorial. Alicia, you can kind of chime in on the point you made on the bus earlier. Yeah, so when we were, um, when we first exited off, we were on this street called College Drive. And so I was telling Jonathan, I was like, if we would have turned left, then we would have went to LSU. Um, and so if we would have gone that way, you all would have saw like Walmart and, you know, hotels and suburban areas. And, you know, it, it's kind of the college town, right? And the college um, atmosphere. But we went right, you know, and, and I was telling Jonathan, I was like, it's so interesting how this event happened the opposite direction of LSU. Um, you, because we know the policing looks very different um, in like college areas versus more urban and um, urban areas. Um, and so more than likely, if someone may, would have been doing a similar act um, or, or around LSU, it would have been handled completely different because people are already assuming that like, oh, well, you're probably, you probably go here or, you know, you live in the area type of thing is where the opposite assumptions are made about people when you go that opposite way down College Drive. Um, so, yeah, and, and someone brought up the, uh, you all were, Tiffany was kind of mentioning how it's like South Grand, right? You know, South Grand and North Grand. You know, there, there's one atmosphere when you're around the blue lights of SLU, you go a few streets down and it's completely different. Um, just thinking, you know, college privilege is real. College privilege is real, and I think that's something that you all have to acknowledge as black people, but also as black college students. It's like sometimes crazy that like, I was, on, I was on the bus, like I was asleep, so like, you know, and I wake up, and it's like, if I look around, I feel like I'm still St. Louis in a way because of different parts of um, St. Louis. Yeah, different. I, I live on the, on the north side where it's kind of like this and like a little farther. It's like you go. What streets? On Finney. I live on Finney and uh, Vanderbilt. So you just keep going farther north. You see this kind of stuff. And it's like every day, like I shouldn't be so like comfortable looking at this kind of stuff. But it's like kind of like, a, like, you know, like I'm just learning about some of the history. And it's like I shouldn't feel this way, but it's like if I keep feeling this way and continue into it, I'm going to accept it. And I shouldn't. But it's just like how I feel this moment because so many times I've heard about it and like I think like the only way that sometimes people can understand this kind of stuff is to have somebody near them or somebody who uh, affects them in a way and then they'll understand it through their eyes and start wanting to know more about it because like in the other time like like if it's somebody that's you know a different shade or color or anywhere else maybe you can look into it more that's just my opinion but when it's somebody like anybody like us you know or anyone at all, if it's happening somewhere location-wise, it, it can just be something that's not as big or important. Because if it was something like a bigger, somebody who was bigger and, you know, standings or higher rank, it would have probably been already solved and investigated and everything. It wouldn't be a further investigation or put into an archive or something like that. I mean, I think since Michael Brown, there's been a lot of police shootings that have happened. And one of the things that we people say every time this happens is this is not Ferguson. This is not Ferguson. 
We are not purposing. And what they're trying to say about that, it's up to them. Anybody want to get their interpretation? What do you think? Like, if the police department happens and they like, this ain't Ferguson. Don't, this not Ferguson. Because I feel like when the Mike Brown thing happened, it was like, the way they handled it, the, the way the Ferguson police handled it was just like terrible. And they were like wrong. So I think everybody want to say like, we not kill, we don't do that. We don't kill people for no reason, but it re they do. I mean, obviously they do. So they don't want to, they just don't want that comparison to like the riots and how the police handled it and stuff like that. So. I'm from Chicago and one of the biggest things that like happened is kind of like similar to this is the Laquan McDonald shooting. And so this was a boy that was shot 16 times and what happens is like the police office, like the police department usually says like what the person was doing wrong and they kind of try to like give you facts about like why it was like a justified shot right but they don't let us see the same things that they saw you get what i'm saying and so then when you see the video and you see the footage and you see like yeah he possibly did have something in his hand but he was walking away from y'all like it's like that, that totally like changes things and then like our mayor covered it up like it was so much stuff that just happened around this whole like thing and so first of all they like say how he's like a black boy he was breaking into cars and all those things which is like which is like okay yeah that means that the police should have been there and yes that means that he should have been arrested but should he have been shot 16 times and so i think they try to justify like their wrongdoings based on like somebody being criminals but the whole purpose of us to have police officers is to like to deal with criminals right. A few years ago, maybe like four years ago, my cousin was killed by a police officer in Florida. He was unarmed. Um, but the crazy part about that, um, Marquis Spencer. The crazy part about that is like um, they didn't tell my aunt what's happening at all. She had to find out what happened through like his friends, and the cops still haven't told her. Like they, she's been suing them this whole time. She had to drop the case last time because it's too expensive. But like they make it hard for you to even like get justice yourself. So. Crazy. And then people always say like seeing it is different than like experiencing it. It's so true. Like at his funeral we went to it, police were like sitting in the parking lot, like watching us the whole time to make sure we didn't like riot, but it was a funeral. So they treat us kind of like we don't have any like humanity. Isolated. Yeah, I was talking about how we see the like the part of the city we in right now it resemble St. Louis, it resemble Ferguson and everything like that. I mean that's that like should point out that this isn't like an isolated incident. Like this community obviously is like in pain. Like it obviously hurts. It's not the probably not the richest part of the town. I'm not gonna assume or anything like that, but it's probably not the richest part of the town. And so like when something like that, uh like in these type of communities where it's uh high rates of policing and uh things of that nature and police uh like they have a lot of uh, 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 uh just wrongdoings in the police system, like, and things like this, it's just like the starter broke the camera's back, honestly. And I mean, it's just, this is just the outpouring of like the people who are just hurt. Like, this is all hurt. Like, I can see it on everybody's face out there too. Like, y'all can feel the hurt right here. Although I had an amazing experience in New Orleans, from visiting the river walk to tasting amazing New Orleans food, it was also a time for reflection. A reflection on the climate issues facing the black community, and also a reflection on my own college privilege. I invite you all to attend VSA's Black History Month events this month. Thank you for watching.